Hello and welcome back to another review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I'm going to go through my five top whiskies of the summer. Things I feel I've been reaching for a little bit easier than others. If I'm ever stuck and not too sure what to go for, not too sure about my mood, um, I've just found some whiskies that I seem to reach for quite easily. Ones that are quite easily going and just kind of hit the, hit the right spots at the right time. So I've got five whiskies here, all kind of different I would say in their, in their own unique way. So I'll kind of go through them, why I've chosen them. Um, the only thing I forgot to do is write down the price, but I've got a rough idea of what they are retailing for anyway. And see how long, once I do my, my Christmas one as well, I suspect a lot will change in that time. I just seen the summer palette kind of goes a little bit different compared to the, to the winter palette and so forth. So the first one here that I've got in the glass, you probably won't know what it is because if you do, you're doing absolutely fantastic. Um, very light and very easy going. What I've got here is a Loch Lomond single grain. So it's a single grain because it's used in the Loma still, the coffee still, but it's still malty barley. But because it's not been used in a traditional pot still, they can't call it single malt. So it's a single grain still used in malty barley, but using a slightly different process. This whiskey here is absolutely brilliant. So Highland whiskey. 46% non-gel filtered and natural colour is what I believe. Non-peated, they do have a peated version as well, which is next kind of on my radar to go for. This has got everything. If you imagine summer in the garden being a stunning, stunning day, you want things that are going to be quite light and easy going, your kind of softer fruits. This has got that easy going, syrupy fruits, quite melon, slight sweet sugar notes. A wee bit of maltiness to it. It's so tropical. Really tropical. Nice mouthfeel. Very easy going. It's a starter whiskey for the night. It's one during the middle. It's one to finish on for me. I just think it hits all the right spots. And price point as well. This is less than 30 quid. I've had this for a while, um, I think I got one a year ago, I got this back, this has probably got just less than half a bottle on it, this is one that will always get re-bought, re I'll always have this on my shelf I think, especially for price point, under £30 as I said, you can pick it up in most places, because it's single grain there's a lot of it out there, easy to obtain, we've got 46% on it, and we've got these really, really nice kind of mouthfeels, it noses very well, it just hits all the spots for me. So these are all in no particular order, by the way. These are just the five that I find myself needing a wee dram one night and I'll have a look and I'm just not too sure what mood I'm in. These are where I just automatically kind of reach for. So this here, really good bourbon cask influence. Just so easy going. I really like it for what it is. And I remember trying this in a tasting and there was an 18 year old and all these other things thinking this is just going to be forgotten about. But it's a real standard just for the quality. And the price, so I'll put that down there. Um, next up, what will I pick? This one. So next up is a independent bottling, Murray McDavid. I think it used to be owned by AC, I think if they still are or not. This is a four-year-old Tullabarden, distilled in 2016, bottled in 2020. So this is a first fill PX cast. It started in bourbon uh, and then finished in a first fill PX cast. This is sweet, this is 46% non-chill filtered. Tullabarden, another Highland whiskey. Four years old. Independent bottle-wise of Tullabarden, I've not tried much. I think this is pretty, probably one of the first ones. This is a benchmark series. There's 13, uh, just over 1,300, I think, bottles all in of this. But this is your sweeter, your raisins. It doesn't taste like four years old. I think that PX cast has got a lot to say about it. Yeah, just softer raisins, kind of milky chocolate, tiny coffee note, red berries. And it's got a kind of syrupy texture to it, I find as well. It's just got slightly darker from what you can see from this. Like the Loch Lomond is very light and going. This has got that kind of slight different mouthfeel. 
super easy to drink. It's very sweet. If you like a real sweet whiskey, this is definitely one to go for. But it's hard to have, say, two or three. I was at a wedding another week and this is what I put in my hip flask as well, just because I thought, do you know what? It's easy to drink if people aren't too sure about whiskey. It's a good start in whiskey as well, just for taking away the, the whiskey um, taste, if that makes sense to people that aren't too sure about it. It's a nice wee start. I got this as a birthday present, I'm sure it was, and that was in May. And as you can see, I'm kind of halfway through that. Another easy one to go for. Looking up, I think this was less than £40. Again, for a 46% non-chill fill, where they've got an age statement on there of four years. But as I say, if you tried this blind, I, would, I wouldn't even be close to putting a four eh, on that. I think I would have a one before it and believe this is probably older than it actually actually is but really sweet toffee fudge milky chocolate those raisins it's just a really good easy sipping go-to dram so that's another one that i'm finding myself going for if i'm not too sure about what drams i'm going to have on um a night so we move to isla look you can see there's not much left in that lagavulin 8 so in the UK here, the Lagavulin 8 has been seen in uh, supermarkets, predominantly Tesco, which is one of our, our supermarkets here. And this was on a deal, and I think at the time I picked it up for £38 or £34, one of the two with the club card. The whole uproar about the 16-year-old getting hard to get, and it's quite... Um, pricey as it is so they brought the eight year old out in the supermarket so there must be a lot of it because that's supplying a huge huge chain um of places in the uk so i found this and i thought Do you know what i'll give it a go the 16s what got me into whiskey but the lager villain being half the price and a wee bit more and the eight year old and we're getting more abv so this is 48 percent. i do believe there will be color in there that's the only thing about most of diageo's products we don't get to see is it natural in these things, so I always assume that there's colouring uh, and filter. But forty eight percent might be filtered slightly, but we're not too sure. So as you can see, I've only got a couple of drams left in this. This was stunning. I really, really enjoyed this. It was. It's got that kind of burnt bacon note to it, but there's those light coastal hits. A lot of bourbon influence. It is a light, light isla. Even though we're coming from Lagavulin, we know what Lagavulin's about. We know that big peat hit, that big. You know when you've had a Lagavulin, you know we've had isla. This had this really nice, softer, again, more tropical, kind of melon undertone to it. And the peat at the end wasn't as much in the forefront for young, young whiskey for eight years old. And I've done a comparison, a video the other week about the 8 and the 16. I think I actually chose the 8-year-old as a winner. I find this very easy to reach for. The 16 is quite special to me. It is what got me into it. So it's not one I want to keep reaching for. Just for replacing that bottle price-wise is, is up there. And it is getting harder to get. So we're seeing prices constantly creep up. But 8-year-old lag villain. Again, a single age statement we've got here. I just really liked it. I wasn't expecting that. I thought the 16 would just completely blow out of the water. But seeing the Lagavulin in a different light, slightly different cask makeup as well, and just price point. This is my kind of isle I reach for. Finishing the end of the night, you've, I've got an array of whiskey to kind of choose from, and this is one I can see myself going for quite a lot. And as you can see, I think I bought this bottle maybe tail end of last year. Um, and for all the bottles that I have, this is... The kind of isla one I seem to be reaching for quite quite a lot. So I've not got much left in that. If I find this on deal again, I will definitely replace it just for quality. 48%. We're seeing like is slightly different. And I just really enjoyed it. Exceptionally fine is what it is saying on this bottle. But I would just like to have a non-chill filtered natural colour on there just to give us a wee bit more indication of what it is. Moving on to a newer distillery, something that I see myself reaching for, a lowland, so Lindor's, Lindor's Abbey is, I find this very easy going as well, it's got that slightly different cast makeup, bourbon sherry and a red wine, barrique, 
and that break finish I think has just given this a little bit of lift a nice sweeter undertone to it but the balance from the sweeter coconuts and typical bourbon cask uh, influence that you get finish that little bit of red wine break is absolutely quality just realised I haven't had a wee sit I'm going to put a wee bit in of this so Lindor's this is their first release um, and we're starting to see a lot more Lowland whiskies out there I wasn't sure at first what it was going to be like uh, you know a lot of new distilleries coming out but the cast quality everything about this tram is great again they've got very transparent the 46 percent not sure filtered natural color i'm sure has got on here for somewhere or has it not in fact have i just seen that i'm sure it was on this that i have seen I'm pretty sure it is when I looked this up, when I done it, it's not filtered that score, but 46% bourbon sherry wine break, slightly dark in colour again from a tr traditional bourbon cask. But again, it's a really light whiskey. It's simple, but yet complex. It's got that nice sweetness that they started seeing about those kind of coconuts fudges and things and at the end it's just got that wee tinge of that red wine you just know it's not a full bourbon cash you know there's something slightly different in there and i just found this a very easy going reaching for a dram at the start it was nice this whiskey i remember doing the review the first time i thought okay this is quite nice but given it that opportunity to open up but a non-age statement it's going to be non-age statement for a while i would imagine but this is a first release I was able to get it, I, paid, I think I paid £45 because they came out with a really good price point to get people drinking that whiskey. And I just really enjoy it. A really nice Lowlands whiskey, top quality price, top quality product. Oh, it just smells great. It's a cool box, one that kind of stands out as well, that you know you're going to... Um, notice from when you walk in a shop for instance not a traditional style that you get but cracking lowland whiskey and i'm looking forward to seeing what else comes out hopefully the price point stays the same i'll struggle to find this again just as it's one of the first releases but i would buy the next in line uh, when they come out and that one's kind of finished but again another easy sipping summer dram we move on to number five the last one cohoman we're back on isla this Newish distillery, as we say on a line. This was the first distillery after Lagavulin. It came a hundred years after Lagavulin was founded. Or two hundred years, two hundred years, sorry, after Lagavulin was founded. So Cohoman, but this is a Madeira cask. Isla and wine casks for me, I think you can't get a better marriage. Um, I just think peat and kind of wine cask go hand in hand for for some weird reason. So this sweet Madeira wine, as you can see, there's not much left. Another cracking finishing whiskey to a night. This is a 2021 release of 17,000 bottles. It's 50% a limited edition. The sad thing about this is I probably have to pick it up in auction and pay way over the odds for it, which is quite sad. But it's a quality dram. Cohoman for me, just do everything right. They hit. All the right spots, the transparency, everything's coming from Isla, they're keeping it local. Anthony Willis is very open about how they do things and plans for future, etc. Cohoman, as of now, is kind of of age to put age statements on there. But age statements for me doesn't always deter what a whiskey should be. I think it's some people want to buy it and say, I have this ex old whiskey and I have this. This has this weirdly nice. It's a completely different smell from the Lagavulin. It's unbelievable. Sweeter, slightly more coastal to it. Salty caramel. Um, it's a, a sweet peat. I'll finish this, I'll put a wee bit in.
50 percent 17,000 bottle toes i think you'll struggle to walk in a shop and find this is cohoman starting to really get taken over and they've, they've really made their name known on an island that's i'd probably say scotland's most famous whiskey region um personally just that most people know from your lager villains and, and art bags and so forth there's that salty caramel that's kind of ocean breeze the soft smoke coming through peachy apricot again it's that summer notes to what i think summer whiskey is and this is one that i reach for again finishing a night you're looking for something just that wee bit more the the lagavulin and eight is it's simple it does what it does but this just gives us a different light of kind of sweetness to to whiskey and i found myself just going for this finishing my night as a wee um a wee palate cleanser or finishing I can't remember the price I paid for this. This is probably the most expensive out of the, the three, way above 50, I think even more, 70 pounds, if I can remember correctly. This is cracking finished. That sweet peat at the end, kind of dry hay, dry grass, it's, it's just completely different for the lag of villain, but in such a positive way. But that's my five whiskies of summer. They're the five that I reach for, the easy ones to go for. Most of them, I three out of the five will be easy easily to put them back on the shelf i would imagine and um, for, for a good price and i will do i have a favorite no they're just ones that as i said i can reach for quite easily i know what they're going to do they're just a lot of trust in them and things sometimes i like to move my collection around and put bottles out of the back to the front and just give you a new light so again this will change in Christmas and see if any of these will be in the Christmas lineup for my winter drams. Winter drams I seem to be kind of more peaty, more sherry, just kind of warming cast strength things. But as uh, you can see, my highest ABB, ABV was 50%. I am a huge fan of cast strength, single cast things. But it's my summer dram, the easy to go for, non-offensive, but top quality. So that's my five drams. Let me know in the comments below what your five grams are. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe for weekly content. I'm going to go and finish this. I'm going to go and sit and relax. I'll maybe go and have a wee move about in my collection just now as well and see what I've got sitting at the back of this cupboard of mine and the other cupboard I have that you've probably not seen and see if we've got new whiskey coming for next week. But as always, I've been Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Bye.